I'm in a very, very good mood, okay? Just played Call of Duty Warzone, finally got a win on season six. My 11th win in total over the seasons. I should be on at least 20, 25, but we keep coming second place, as you guys know. Uh, but yeah, I'm in a good mood, man. So what's going on, guys? Well, watch us back again with an OG for you guys. I hope you're all having a lovely day, slash, you know, I really do mean that, by the way, because I'm in a very good mood. Not saying that I'm never, but I'm in a really good mood. Nothing can basically ruin it. If you know what I mean. I'm looking forward to the weekend. Hopefully Chelsea get that win on the weekend. Um, but yeah, as always, I'll give you guys the latest Chelsea news. News in, news out in the last 12 hours. It's going to be summarising Frank Lambert's press conference ahead of the game against Palace on the weekend. And giving you guys my predicted 11 for the starting lineup. So guys, if you enjoy my content, smash that like button. Let's get at least 500 likes on the video. Subscribe if you're new here. Hit the notification. Tune in daily. And comment down below your thoughts and opinions on each topic I speak. Also, let me know if you want me to do a live stream review after the game or should I just record a review and post it. I want to hear everyone's opinions on that as well. So we're going to be starting with the Chelsea news of course in the last 12 hours. Goal Nizar has come out recently saying Inter looking at Marcos Alonso and Emerson after Spanish fullbacks row with Frank Lampard last weekend against West Brom. He's also said Napoli have joined the race for Bakayoko and also PSG are strong front runners for Rudiger now. So that's all according to the goal. Now go to Sky Germany this morning. Breakthrough in Rudiger's talks to Spurs. That's happened according to those guys. We've got BBC announcing that um, Stanley have signed 19-year-old Chelsea midfielder John Russell on a season-long loan. Not going to say that I know much of him, but good luck to him. Um, I need to start looking into more of the youngsters at this club and seeing where they're developing as well. Not just the first team and just focusing on who's going in, in and out, of course. I want to make sure... I improve my knowledge on these guys also if you guys have any information any news let me know on all social medias i'm happy to give you guys credit as well um as i said this channel is for the fans worldwide so we can all improve not you know i'm nothing special you know what i mean i'm just like you guys watching chelsea day in day out you know what i mean so i really hope you know you guys support me on the journey so as i said Marcus Alonso emerson I told you guys emerson was most like the guy that i wanted to keep at chelsea before the west brom game but it looks like they've fallen out and when obviously someone's fallen out, kind of try to get rid of them. You know, like David Luiz, we just got rid of him and went to Arsenal. Marx Alonso, you know, if he's to leave for Inter Milan, whether it's on loan, whether we get like a 15, 20 million pounds, like I said, for Emerson, we need to get those funds in in order to maybe put a sneaky bid for Declan Rice towards the end of the window, in my opinion. If not, if these guys go out on loan, I do not expect any more incomings to be happening this uh, transfer window which I'll be getting into the press conference so let me know who you want to see stay Marcus Alonso or Emerson and why um, as I said before for me it was Marcus Alonso staying but now it doesn't really make sense but Emerson defensively you know he's he, he's been sleeping you know he came up with Ben Chiu uh, as I said I know Zuma should have cleared it or should have helped clear it for Lemonola's goal but he was just caught napping as well man so it's question marks that need to be asked you know can Marcus Alonso and Frank Lampard resolve this issue and hopefully he comes back I don't know. Let me know what you guys think. Back Yoko, we know Ace Milan, PSG, even Monaco looking at this guy on loan. Okay, We thought Ace Milan would be doing this deal very, very soon, but it's still not done. And now we're here in Napoli. Now, I've got other news from Alfredo Padella on this story. Napoli are interested in signing Back Yoko, and the midfielder has already said yes to his former manager, Gattuso. So, you know, who do we believe? You know, we hear an Italian report saying... Ace Milan, option to buy, done deal. We heard Fabrizio Romano say it, and I was hearing um, Alfredo were hearing goal. You know, other Italian clubs are looking for Bakayoko right now. I just want the guy gone. I told you, I don't wish the guy any bad, but we need to move on from all these things, okay? We need to get rid of these dead wood, okay? That's all I want to see. I just want to see these guys go. I want to see mandatory bids after the, um, the loan deal for the season. I want to see you guys buying for cheap at 15 20. I told you guys, we make a profit. Over time, with all the loan fees, all the wages not paid, we made a profit overall if we get at least £20 million pounds for the player. So it's a no-brainer, you know what I mean? It's a no-brainer. Rudiger to Tottenham, as I said, a defender has to go. It's either Christensen or Rudiger. It's going to be Rudiger. Whether it's Tottenham, I really hope he doesn't move to Tottenham, but it's a bit sad that we've just frozen them out. He's helped us get Kairos and Timo Werner. He could have went to PSG and helped us get Neymar and Mbappe, maybe. You never know. But why Tottenham? Why do these players consider Arsenal Tottenham? I don't understand. Like, Jorginho is another player that's looking at Arsenal right now. Now, Arsenal are looking at a number of players, and Jorginho is at the second, third choice. If they cannot get their first targets, I don't know if they have the money in the first place, then they're looking at Jorginho on a loan. Jorginho is open to it. Talks have happened, of course, 
uh, we're waiting to see what's happening next but I'll be very surprised if Jorginho was to move to North London for the senior of vice captain you know he either goes back to Italy uh, goes around his hometown and stays there for the rest of his career or he just stays at Chelsea in my opinion so it's going to be very interesting to see where we go with these topics so we're going to move straight on to the press conference now Frank Lampard spoke and saying Lampard on selling Chelsea squad this is all from Nizar from the goal so go support him as well um, I get all some of my information from him uh, we have a big squad I'm not interested in getting involved with speculation over the last few days of the window aka Declan Rice you know no manager's going to come out and say we're going to be putting in a bid for him but that's he's saying that's it like the squad's done so maybe it is done if we're not getting rid of these players Lampard loaning players at Hudson Road tomorrow love to cheat with every player in the squad you consider what's best for the players with those three I haven't got an answer Mason Mount and apparently everybody um, you know hugged Mason Mount as they will do for anyone around the squad uh, he's a special player I've been a penalty misser myself with Mason the biggest thing is that he might feel he let down me or the teammates but it's the opposite he's fantastic of course fantastic words from the coach backing his players of course which is what we need in this current moment of time because a lot of fans are going to be hating on the guy um, I try to make it positive not to abuse the guy but try to criticize him in terms of yeah he looks like he's burning out he didn't we really have a good game um, penalty wasn't on point and it goes down to Lampard as well for playing him every single game so hopefully he gets rested but I know my put lineup I have to include him because I know Frank Lampard will play that guy Okay, so before you guys get on to me about my pretty lineup, it's realistic movements that I think Frank Lampard will do. Okay, what Lampard wants to do, not what I want to do, what Lampard will do is what I say in the pretty 11. Um, injuries, Pulisic is in the squad for tomorrow, as he said on Fortnite streaming that he's ready, but he won't start the match. So as I said, I want 15 20 minutes, then I'm a happy man. That's all I want. Hakim Ziyech won't make it, but it's very close. Lampard and Pulisic and Ziyech coming back to help Werner and Havertz. I think they will all bring the best out of each other. Hakim is going to bring something completely different for us. This is what I mean, man. The ball's behind the back line. You know what I mean? The one that we saw in preseason. One ball. That's all it took. And it was in. That's it. Imagine Timo Werner running onto those balls, man. I cannot wait. I genuinely cannot wait for those balls, man. We need... Hakim Ziyech to come back as soon as possible. I have clear ideas of where I want to play them to play, of course. So, this is what I mean. Our squad is not fully back. When we're seeing Timo Werner on the wing, maybe it's because we're still waiting for our players to come back. Christian Pulisic, Hakim Ziyech, coming back in the team, and then Timo Werner playing up front. So, right now, unfortunately, Timo Werner has to play on the left wing. So, Lampard said Billy Gorm was progressing well and he hopes he'll be back in four weeks. So after the international break, of course, hopefully, you know, he's training, doing well and playing in cup games most likely. Maybe group stage games in Champions League because no offence to the teams around us. Maybe Civil might be difficult. I know you guys are saying Rennes are a difficult team in the first. They've only played a few games, man. Calm down. Okay, it always happens. Teams can start really well and then they drop down. It happens even in the Premier League, you know what I mean? So... We have to be realistic. They are very, very good teams, okay? But we really have an easy, easy uh, group stage. Honestly, I'll be very surprised if we do not get first place. I expect to beat Savoy at home and maybe draw away from home. But I believe in this team. When they gel, we can win 100%. So that's my thoughts on there. Now, I want to give you my predicted 11. I'm going with Mendy, Azpi right back, Zuma centre back, Thiago Silva centre back, Ben Chio left back, Jorginho, Kovacic, Kajavitz, Hudson Odoi, Mount, and Werner up front. That's what I believe Frank Lampard will do. Um, the other option he could do is not play um, Jorginho or Kovacic, of course. He can play Kante in the middle, and then he can have the two midfielders, Mason Mount and Kajavitz, and then play Timo Werner on the left, Mace, um, Hudson Doyle on the other side, and then striker like a Giroud or Tammy. That's what could happen. Apologies if I miss out on any of these players being suspended or anything. I'm not aware of Kante being suspended, maybe. I don't think so. I didn't. I didn't check on that, but I thought they would have said it in, you know, the press conference or something. So, hopefully, you guys agree. One of my lineups, at least. Uh, let me know if you change anything personally. Of course, I'll change a few things, but I want to hear whether you agree with Lampard's most likely lineup, or do you have a completely different lineup? So, guys, if you enjoy my content, smash that like button. Let's get at least 500 likes. Subscribe if you're new here. Hit the bell notification. Tune in daily. Comment down below your thoughts and opinions, and let me know. Should I do a live stream after the game or should I just do a normal review? Because I look for as much feedback as possible, basically. And you don't know how it goes, man. 10 minute gang, 
that's what we're going to see on YouTube. Every single day, if possible, Mr. Consistency is now out. Peace.